In this video, I want to talk about the relationship between circuits and mathematical logic. So first, let's discuss the notion of a switch. So say uh, we have something that looks like this. So in this case, we would say the switch is open. And if we have something that looks like this, we'll say the switch is closed. Okay, now we're going to draw a very simple circuit just so you see uh, what one looks like. So I'm going to draw a little box looking figure and I'll put the switch in the open position. Okay, now we need a battery uh, here to power things, so I'll do this. So this is the battery, a little red battery. And it's going to power just like a little light bulb. So this is our little magical light bulb. So as you can see, uh, the light bulb is going to be off. So the light is off if the switch is open. So if the switch is open. And if it's closed, uh, the light uh, will be on. Will be on. So already you can kind of see how this could easily become mathematical, right? We're talking about on and off, you know, true or false. Uh, so it's natural to think about logic. Let's look at two special uh, types of uh, switches. Let's look first at what's called switches. in series. That's the idea here in this picture. Um, so a switch in series would look something like this, or switches in series, rather plural. Okay, I'll put some dots here. And this would be P and this would be Q. And both of these right now are in the open uh, position. Let's go ahead and draw our battery for completeness and our wonderful little light bulb. So in this case, uh, when the switches are in series, the only way that current is going to flow to turn this light bulb on is if both switches are closed. So in other words, if both P and Q are closed. In other words, if they're both true. So the light bulb is on if P, Q are both closed. That's the only time. So you can see how this already can relate to mathematical logic. Remember, P and Q will be true only if P and Q are both true. Likewise, uh, this light bulb will turn on only if P and Q are both closed. So you can think of it as a logical thing. The light will turn on only when P and Q are true. Okay, so for switches in the series, uh, the AND operator is the natural operation. If we look at uh, what's called uh, switches in parallel, I'll draw it up here, switches in parallel. Let's go ahead and draw the box. It's a little bit harder to draw the circuit. It looks something like this. Okay, and we have an open switch here and an open switch here. Let's come down this way and then let's go ahead and name things. This will be Q, this will be P, and they're both in the open position, so uh, the light in this case will be off. i go ahead and draw the light here. There's our light. And these are said to be uh, switches in parallel. So as long as one of these is closed, we'll be able to turn the light on. So at least one has to be closed. So in this case, at least one must be closed. So it's on if at least one is closed. On if at least at least one one is closed. So this will be on if at least one is closed. This is on if both P and Q are closed. So if you think about the mathematical logical symbol that relates to this, that would be the or, right? P or Q is true if at least one is true. So already you can see we can describe switches in series by using AND, and we can describe switches in parallel by using OR. So the idea here is that you have uh, like these inputs. So you have like P, Q, 
Q, R, and they're going into some mysterious thing, which we'll call like a black box. And the black box will spit out an output, which we'll call S. So that's the, the thinking here. We think of uh, things going into a box, which we don't know what it does, and it spits an output. Well, we kind of do know what it does, right? We're devising, we're creating uh, operations. We have AND, we have OR, and then another natural one that we can use is NOT. That leads us to the next topic, which is actual uh, logic gates. So the first gate we have is the NOT gate. And the NOT gate is usually represented uh, by a triangle like this. And you just write NOT. NOT. And it takes an input P, and the output um, is, I guess, R. In this case, let's call it R. And then NOT just uh, negates it. So let's, let's look at the, the values. This is our P, and this is our R. So this is our input, and this here is our output. So if your input is 1, we use 1s and zeros uh, when we deal with circuits. So 1 is true, 0 is false. So if you input 1, it'll turn into false, so it'll turn into 0. If you input 0 that's false, it'll turn into 1, which is true. So it's just like the not symbol from mathematical logic, except uh, we use this triangle and we write not, and instead of true, we write 1, and instead of false, we write 0. So that's uh, probably one of the most basic uh, logic gates. Another really important logic gate, and we'll do an example after we go over these gates, is the AND gate. So you saw AND could describe uh, the series, the, the switches in series up here, right? AND describes this diagram. So the light bulb turns on only when uh, AND is true. So AND takes two inputs. It takes P and it takes Q. And this is typically the symbol that we use for AND. It's this funny looking symbol. And we write AND. And the output is R. And if we make uh, an input-output table, so P, Q, R, it's just like the input-output out, output table for um, P and Q in mathematical logic. So we have different possibilities. So true, true, so 1, 1. True, false, so 1, 0. False, true, so 0, 1. And false, false, so 0, 0. And just like in mathematical logic, uh, and is true when only when both are true. So when both are 1, R is going to be 1. Otherwise, it's false, so it's all zeros. So if you think back to mathematical logic, uh, this makes a ton of sense. So super useful to, to know that logic. And the last one we're going to look at, that last really basic um, type of gate, is the OR gate. Okay, The OR gate's a little bit harder to draw. It looks like this. It's really funky. It's a rough picture of the OR gate. Then you just put OR. And this also takes two inputs. Okay, It takes uh, P and Q. And in this case, the output is uh, R. Okay, The output is R. And let's go ahead and make uh, the input-output table for this. So P, Q, R. So again, the inputs are the same. We can have 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Now, OR is true uh, in mathematical logic if at least one of PQ is true. So in this case, since one is true, uh, R will be true. So R will be one if at least one of P or Q is one. So in this case, they're both one, so it's one. Here, this one is one, so it's one. Here, this one is one, so it's one. And here, they're both zero, so they're both false, so it's zero. So that's the table for OR. So it's really, really nice um, that this is related to uh, mathematical logic. I believe uh, it was a man named Claude Shannon who really first made this like a big deal. I, I think it was in the 30s or something, but I'm not, uh, I'm not really sure. Let's do, let's do a simple uh, example of uh, some stuff with, with circuits and, and logic. Let's see. Let's determine the input of something. Say we have, say we have um, P and it goes into uh, a NOT gate. Right, example for example. And then say we have that goes into uh, an OR gate. Okay, so OR. And that goes that way. And then say we have Q. 
also going into this OR gate. Okay, and then this would be uh, R here. And let's figure out what the input, what the output is. Say we have the following input signals. So input signals. Uh, say P equals zero and uh, Q equals one. Let's find out what the output is. So to do this, you just work left to right. So I'm going to put a one here. Oh, sorry, zero there. <laughs> P is zero and Q is one. So zero goes into the NOT gate, so that gets negated, so it turns into a 1. And now you have two ones going into the OR gate. So whenever you have two ones going into the OR gate, you know the result is always 1. So, the, so it's 1. So the output signal is R equals 1. So really simple example of how it works. You know, you just work left through right, you plug in these inputs, and, and you, get, uh, you get an output. So it's really, really uh, nice. You can actually write a Boolean expression for a circuit, too. Let me show you how to do that. Why not? There's all kinds of stuff you can do. This is just supposed to be like a quick uh, intro video. Um, say we have, um, say we have uh, an AND gate here. So this is AND. And say we have a NOT gate here. So this is NOT. And then let's say uh, this goes to uh, an OR gate. This is an OR gate. And let's just say this comes down here like this. Okay. So now for, in order for this to make sense, because uh, I'm just making this up on the spot, the, the AND gate has to have two inputs. So let's do P, Q. So let's take them both there. And then the NOT gate has to have a single input. Let's make it, let's make it Q. So we'll make Q go into the NOT gate. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write the Boolean uh, expression uh, for this circuit. Okay, so here's how it works. I'm going to use a different color. So you just work left to right. So P and Q are going into the AND gate. So the result is going to be P and Q. Q is going into the NOT gate. So the result is NOT Q. And now you have P and Q and NOT Q going into the OR gate. So the result is... P and Q, or not Q. Pretty cool, right? So you can take this circuit diagram and convert it into, uh, into a Boolean uh, expression. Really, really uh, interesting stuff. So I hope this video has been helpful, and uh, yeah, that's it.